This video is the culmination of documentary theory, video, and photo projects in John Berger's Ways of Seeing, and it hopes to answer the question, what is documentary? To me, and I think many others, documentary is long-form storytelling. It's non-fiction filmmaking. It doesn't just work as news journalism, it explores something different that reveals humanity. It's about reflection, perspective, subjectivity, and experimenting. John Grierson coined the term documentary back in 1926 and described it as the creative treatment of actuality. Yet when an image is presented as a work of art, the way people look at it is affected by a whole series of learned assumptions about art. Assumptions concerning beauty, civilization, taste, and more. Essay 1. Berger says that seeing comes before words. The child looks and recognizes before it can speak. But there is also another sense in which seeing comes before words. It is seeing which establishes our place in the surrounding world. We explain that world with words, but words can never undo the fact that we are surrounded by it. The relation between what we see and what we know is never settled. The way we see things is affected by what we know or what we believe, Berger says. In the Middle Ages, when men believed in the physical existence of hell, the sight of fire must have meant something different from what it means today. Nevertheless, their idea of hell owed a lot to the sight of the first consuming ashes remaining, as well as to their experience of the pain of burns. To look is an act of choice. An image is a sight which has been recreated or reproduced, Berger says. It is an appearance or a set of appearances which has been detached from the place and time in which it first made its appearance and preserved for a few moments or a few centuries. Every image embodies a way of seeing, even a photograph, for photographs are not, as is often assumed, a mechanical record. Every time we look at a photograph, we are aware, however slightly, of the photographer selecting that sight from an infinity of other possible sights. Franz Howells painted these portraits in the 1600s. What do you think of them? An art historian explicitly said that it would be incorrect to read into the paintings any criticism of the sitters. There is no evidence, he says, that Howells painted them in a spirit of bitterness. What do you think about these portraits? Franz Howells' paintings made me think of a Russian filmmaker's experiment with his own images. The Kuleshov effect is the idea that two shots in a sequence are more impactful than a single shot by itself. This effect is a cognitive event that allows readers to derive meaning from the interaction of two shots in a sequence. Kuleshov believed that the interaction of shots in filmmaking was what differentiated cinema from photography, as photographs are single shots in isolation that don't allow viewers to derive the same meaning. Berger says that the invention of the camera also changed the way in which men saw paintings painted long before the camera was invented. The uniqueness of every painting was once part of the uniqueness of the place where it resided. Sometimes the painting was transportable, but it could never be seen in two places at the same time. When the camera reproduces a painting, it destroys the uniqueness of its image. As a result, its meaning changes, or, more exactly, its meaning multiplies and fragments into many meanings. Reproduction isolates a detail of a painting from the whole. The detail is transformed. An allegorical figure becomes a portrait of a girl, Berger says. Paintings are often reproduced with words around them. This is a landscape of a cornfield with birds flying out of it. Look at it for a moment. It is hard to define exactly how the words have changed the image, but undoubtedly they have. The image now illustrates the sentence, this is the last picture that Van Gogh painted before he killed himself, Berger says. This image could be that of a historic European cathedral, but zoomed out, it is a Gothic-style World War II memorial. This image could be a column from a Greek temple ruin, but zoomed out, it is one of six iconic columns from the University of Missouri. This image could be the dome of a governmental building, but it's the academic hall of the university. This image could be that of any type of changing tree or bush, but it is clearly a section of a tree and the remaining green leaves are difficult to see now. 
This image could be that of a lonely abandoned bridge in the middle of the woods, but it is clearly a part of a busy trail system. This image shows an ant crawling around on some sort of red structure, but we learn that the structure is a large barn. Documentary is the creative treatment of actuality, but it's also an artistic treatment of actuality with the use of cameras, edits, composition, and framing. Regardless of the artistic subjective nature of documentaries, intention has to be considered at every decision because context makes a difference in what the filmmaker is attempting to portray to the viewer. This is what John Berger's Ways of Seeing, Essay 1, is indicating to me, and this is how I answer the question, what is documentary?